Hey, look, I've found some roadkill. Pedro woke at the strange voice. A vicious-looking brown wolf with a nasty scar where his nose should be stood over him. Pedro jumped up, pushing the wolf back. Two other wolves sauntered over, one tall and skinny, the other short and fat. What'd you find, boss? I found some roadkill, but it's moving. Who are you calling roadkill? Pedro growled. You, you cockeyed spaniel. You look like you've been run over twice. Look who's talking. What happened to your snot nozzle, no nose? Pedro was outnumbered, but he wasn't going to go down without a fight. No-Nose snarled, showing sharp teeth and black gums. Oh, you are dead. We are going to rip you apart and leave your bones for the buzzards. Get him! Pedro crouched low, ready to pounce at whoever came at him first. You're the ones that will be torn apart. The wolves hesitated and looked at each other. Like all bullies, they were cowards. Pedro saw his chance to attack and was about to pounce when a voice stopped him in his tracks. Hey, back off, chicken lickers. Pick on someone your own size. The wolves looked round in surprise, but could not see anyone. Who said that? demanded No-Nose. Hey, down here, and I said back off. Pedro didn't move, nor did he take his eyes off No-Nose. The tall, skinny wolf put his nose down to the sand to get a closer look, then jumped back as if something had bitten him. It's a flea! He screeched. If there is one thing furry animals don't like, it's fleas, and this was a big one. Get out of our way, flea! No nose growled. Me and the boys are hungry, and one little flea ain't gonna stop us from eating this here dog. Yeah! said the flea as he jumped up on the rock next to Pedro. Well, I ain't no ordinary flea. I'm a Mexican jumping flea, heavy with eggs. If you or these two other fart wranglers take one more step towards this guy, me and my babies are gonna bring some pain down on your furry behinds, and when my babies come, they come with the hunger. The wolves looked at each other. The last thing they wanted was a flea infestation. They weren't that hungry. No-Nose backed away, his companions following. We will get you, Roadkill. You see if we don't. You won't last two days in the desert, and when you start to weaken, that's when we will come for you. Whatever, losers, shouted the flea. Pedro relaxed a little, but kept his eye on the departing wolves. Thanks, but I can take care of myself, he said. Is that right, said the flea. Who is this dog that can take on three wolves on his own? You are either very brave or very dumb, my friend. I am Pedro, and I am the bravest dog in the whole of Mexico. It is a pleasure to meet you, Pedro, the bravest dog in the whole of Mexico. My name is Dave. It is nice to meet you, Dave. Pedro, tell me, how exactly did you become the bravest dog in Mexico? Pedro gave this some thought. I don't know, but I am. My mother told me so. Well, good for your mother, but those wolves were right about one thing. You will not survive alone in the desert. I will find a way. Sure you will. So how did the bravest dog in Mexico end up in the middle of the desert anyhow? I was dumped here by my master. I don't really want to talk about it. Now that the wolves were out of sight, Pedro turned to where the flea was standing in order to get a closer look. The flea, although big for a flea, was still very small. He had two big black eyes, a jutting jaw with two large fangs, and powerful-looking legs. On his head, he wore a sombrero, and slung over his back was a tiny guitar. Dumped, eh? That sucks, Dave said. So what is a Mexican jumping flea doing in the middle of the desert? Pedro asked. Oh, I was hitching a ride on a goat, but he didn't make it. A look of guilt flashed across Dave's face. We were on our way to Santa Maria. Santa Maria? Yes, Santa Maria. It is a town where all animals are welcome, and they live in harmony, free of people. 